yours say what mine says? Oh, good. Okay. We're both on the same page. Welcome, everyone. We're here at Louis and Lane Gallery, which is in Glen Huntley, Victoria. And we're going to be speaking to two gallery owners, Connie and Karen, and also two artists that are holding an exhibition called Misco Calio uh, by the names of to Tara and Moana. And this is one of their beautiful artworks right here. Why did you decide to become a gallery owner? Were you an artist beforehand? Well, um, both our backgrounds are, are art backgrounds. I worked in advertising as an art director. And Karen? Yeah, I did a glass and ceramic degree, yeah, many years ago. <laughs> and we both felt it was good to, to get into a new sort of career and both our passions have been art, so the gallery seemed to be a good thing to do. It's also a nice time in life to represent other artists, that, you know, because we're not doing a lot of our own work, so it's nice for us to, to work in a business where we're still, it's very art related and we can promote them. Do you have a selection criteria when choosing art to exhibit? Usually what we suggest is if they could send us an email and with their CV and an artist statement to sort of explain what their artwork's about and what concepts behind them and also a sample of a few, few of their artworks so we can see it. And then there's a few people connected to the gallery that, that look at it and we discuss it and see if it fits into our art space because different galleries look for different things or demographics could be different. How can you tell a good piece of art from a bad piece of art? Is there such a thing? <laughs> well, uh, that is a big question. <laughs> and people will agree and disagree, you know, I mean, you know, what a good piece of art to me might be different to someone else. And so it's a very debatable sort of thing. But often they, there are, you know, if it tells a, usually there's a message, that the communication that comes across is usually sort of a strong design element or a focal point or, you know, there'll be the craft as well. It could, could be where, you know, you can see the person's very skilled in a particular way. But everything has to come together and that's sort of like the X factor. So, you know, there's some things that could be fantastically drawn but still not a great piece of art because there's something else that's, that's missing. So it's, it's a tricky one, that one. I guess a bad piece of art is when you, when you look at it and you feel there's something missing, something that's not tying it together, something that's not making it a strong piece. Would you agree? Yeah, but I mean, yeah. I mean, even famous artists, you know, there's still debate. Some people think someone's a genius and other people go, no. Nah. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, it, 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 it's, yeah. Still, it's still debatable, yeah. How can an artist get noticed by you? Well, you know, if, if they approach us and talk to us and, and, and or send us email, emails showing us their work, and then usually, what I was saying before too, usually we, we follow that up if, if their artwork looks as though it's something that we will have. We ask them to bring some pieces in so we'll see them in the flesh. And then we go, you know, yeah, it, and it's the right thing. So. Yeah, and usually when we get some work and you know, we get quite a few people approach us, but sometimes it just jumps out at you and it excites us and we think, wow, yeah, you've got to have that. Um, sometimes it excites us for the wrong reason, you know, might, we not, may not actually like it or want to put it on our wall, but it's really interesting and it's just, you just think, well, it'll work here. It has to, it has to work, it has to work for our gallery because, yeah, it just has to work in to what we sort of represent because some things work better in, in our area and think some things work better in other areas, but yeah. Oh, so, is the aim of the gallery to just sell work on behalf of the artist? It's to show work and sell work. I mean, you know, some artists' work's more sellable than others, but be, being a commercial gallery, we obviously like to sell the artwork for the artists and, and to keep the doors open for us as well. So, that's certainly 
something there, but sometimes we'll still get works in that are interesting that, you know, may not be as sellable, but at the end of the day, we'd prefer to sell them than to, yeah. yeah. Well, the artists want us to sell them too. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, at the end of the day, they want to sell their work as well. How many pieces of art do you need to have completed before you can actually exhibit your work? Well, we, we take works on consignment, so, it, you know, it's good to have, I don't know, maybe six, five or six pieces where you can show us and then maybe we'll pick three and, and exhibit those in a, like, a mixed room with other artists. But if you're having an exhibition, obviously, you need a lot more and depending on the size, but you need to fill the space depending what space the exhibition is going to be in. But on consignment, probably, you know, five or six so to give us a good idea. And usually we'll take three and then that gives people a good idea of where that person's coming from and what their art style is like. And do you ever run exhibitions where you have a theme that you create yourself and then you select artworks from different artists? We've just, we've had yeah, um, we the got... castle, under castles, you know, the, the one that Rose was in. Oh, that wasn't really. Well, the Mother's Day one was a good one. Yeah, because there were a lot of yeah. artists there. Yeah, we did. We did one that was sort of like, we, what do we call it? Love Mum, Love yeah, Mum, I think. Sort of yeah, and then a whole lot of artists came in, and they all their work was obviously sort of a Mother's Day, I guess. Yeah. But we, we've I, also we had another Mother's Day, well, a student exhibition that great preps and great sixes drew their mothers and that was really interesting too and that was an exhibition for, you know, it was a Mother's Day thing too, wasn't it? Yeah. Your question before too in regards to, you know, we said we, we're basically here to, to sell the, the, you know, we're a commercial gallery here to sell the art, artist's work and they want us to sell their work but sometimes you'll have an exhibition and, and they'll have an exhibition where they bring in a lot of works and, and they're very unsellable. They know they're never going to sell but really... I guess the gallery then becomes a celebration of their work and they can just, yeah, show people what their feelings and thoughts and processes of their art. But, yeah, it's not, it's not always sellable. I guess it adds to the value of the other ones there, doesn't it? Well... Like it makes you sort of realise what you're buying, where it fits into, like, the whole collection of... Well, it, yeah, the yeah. whole... You get the feel the whole for story. the... story. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And that's why usually we, we don't like just taking one piece of art by the person, three at least, to hang on the wall, gives people an idea of what what they're into, really, yeah. What should artists look for in a gallery when they're choosing to exhibit their work? I suppose imagining that your, your work, how it would fit amongst the others around there, that's, and you know, whether the feels, you know, I mean, there's some galleries that just have realistic work. So if you're not doing that, it's obviously not going to be the gallery for you. So, you know, you, you don't want it looking the same as everyone else, obviously, but I suppose there needs to be some sort of feel that you get, which I know is a bit Well, yeah, when they abstract. walk into the gallery, then they should, if they enjoy that space and if they enjoy the sort of artwork they're looking at, and they feel comfortable, then maybe that's their work would belong there. But if they feel like they're not connecting, then maybe it's not the right place for them. Then they need to look around at other galleries. Should you research owners of the galleries or who's sort of going to be displaying, promoting your work? Does that come into it as well? What the, the, the artist, artist, artist should artist research, like who actually runs the gallery? Yeah. I think, well, it's a good idea if they, if they feel they want to know a little bit more and, and they can do that. We're always open to answer questions about what we've been doing and, and how we go about things, yeah. And, and attending their exhibitions and seeing if it's that sort of, it's got the how, right... How we run, yeah, yeah if, if they come to another exhibition that we're running, then they can see how we're running an exhibition and how we're promoting people's work and how we go about it. So it's really good for them to do that. That's good research. So is there an artist's agent or would the gallery be that in the art world? Yeah, that's what the gallery is. But I mean, some, some artists are just tied to one gallery and the gallery promotes them and they're not free to 
to display their work anywhere else. Everything has to come through that gallery. Whereas other artists or galleries haven't got those formalities in place. So well, it's not that just formalities, it's a deal, isn't it? It's yeah, some, that, some, yeah. Well, they're contracted, some artists Yeah, the contract, that's what I was thinking, yeah. 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 If some, somebody sorry. asks you to contract into something like that, why would you contract? Because you don't want them, you don't want them to go anywhere else. But if you contract an artist, you, you need to really look after them and promote them, show them maybe once or twice a year, and then they're not allowed to show anywhere else. So some galleries like to do that, but we don't. We don't actually do that. We like. And we what like. Would be the benefits for the artists. <clears throat> I suppose a bit of security, so to know that they're going to be, you know, promoted over a period of time, and yeah, I think it's yeah, just a bit of security for them. Really, some people, some artists would love that. Some hate it. They don't want to be tied down to a, to one gallery. They want the freedom. Do you put a call out for certain types of art? Um, not really, no. No, not really. People, people just find us or we find them. You mentioned before about the agent thing. Sometimes our other artists are like, act like little agents for us. You know, they'll go out, if they're having a nice experience with us, they'll tell other artists about us. So that yeah, helps. That. Yeah, that, that, that's good. Are there trends in art like there are in fashion clothes? Well, I suppose conceptual art's a big thing at the moment. There's a lot of conceptual and installation work that's that's out there and sort of multimedia work with digital art as well. That's sort of big. What else? There's also a lot, a lot of street of art around. Street art and sort of recycling, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. using use, uh, use uh, found materials and that's quite big. Yeah, Tara Mariana's work, work, that you know, that has got a street art sort of feel with the stencils. So that's And working on work. found objects yeah. you know, or found pieces of wood. So they're probably... So yeah, yeah, it's definitely trends. I just do what they do because that's what comes from them and I mean we get some people come in and say what sort of art sells and I'll do that and and uh, you know you do what comes from you and that and if it sells it's a bonus if it doesn't you, you get the benefit of doing the art and you've got to be authentic to yourself so to follow trends isn't right but some people still if they, if I mean, they, you can be influenced, but to, to sort of go out yeah. and, and copy a style, you know. If they're really quite. inspired by a trend, yeah, I mean, um, there's nothing and then, wrong with and then they feel passionate about it, and then they follow it for that reason. That's that's good. But you wouldn't follow a trend just because it was the end thing to do, because it's it's really not coming from the heart. And artists have to paint what they feel strongly about. Do Do you find that artists follow their find a formula and then follow it? Something that works for them yeah, in the way that they create their art. Yeah, definitely. Well, they they experiment, and then when they find an area that works and people love it and sells, they do tend to keep following that formula, and that is great. But then it's it's like anything. If they want to change, the public love them for a particular style, and sometimes they get caught in a little bit of a rut, and they want to change and go into a different direction. And sometimes it's like starting all over again. It's a bit tricky. People love them for, for what they normally do. So, yeah, they, they can follow a formula, but they don't always like to stay there. And that's, that's all part of growing anyway. So often yeah. they are, the artist wants to move up, but move on, but the public is still asking for yeah. others. And it's, yeah, it, and look, a lot of people like emerging artists work too because they're brave and they get out there and do all sorts of stuff and they're not successful in a certain way which is earning the, the dollars. So they, they're more inclined to experiment and, and do wild stuff. But did you mean a formula as in a formula that somebody else has given them or their own formula? No, their own formula, yeah, probably. Yeah, their own formula. Yeah. You know, it's your comfort zone, it's easy, mm -hmm. but then... If you want to do something that's a bit different, then you've got to 
as Karen says, it's almost like starting again and experimenting and playing and coming up with something else that will also work but it'll be different. Well, it may not work. Yeah. But, I mean, each artist has their own style and that's not necessarily a formula. It's a, it's just their style of painting. So it's not, doesn't necessarily, it's what, it's, it's the language that they use in order to, to, to create the stuff. So it's their own sort of signature style but... Not necessarily a formula, if you know what I mean, because there'll be lots of that will go in all sorts of direction, but you'll still know that it's that particular artist. What makes a good exhibition? A crowd, for one. <laughs> it's quite, always a load of fun because it just becomes a big party, big celebration. So um, I think, yeah, a lot of people's are always really lovely. Yeah, it's a celebration of what they've done. So it's, it's a hard thing for artists to put themselves out there and expose what they've done, you know, often very personal work on the wall. So, yeah, if you get a big group of people that can come and... and creates, a real, it creates a real buzz and everybody in there is, is buzzing and you have a good feeling and then, you know, at, they, they're enjoying the work more and then, you know, you sell more too. But, it, you know, in the end, they're going to like it, you know, regardless yeah. of... So it needs to speak to them, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah. Can the artists get feedback by holding an exhibition? Great way of getting feedback, yeah. Because, I mean, I said, it, it doesn't... By selling lots or sell, selling none doesn't mean you've done better work or worse. <laughs> it's, it's got nothing to do with the calibre of the work. It's what people... Are liking it and are connecting to so that's what it tells you so you know you'll find out how popular your work is or how many people that you're you're reaching or, or speaking to so it'll certainly tell you tell you that also there's a little comments book people write things you know love your work if you don't get a lot of positive comments I guess that's good feedback you'll know obviously not what you wanted but yeah I mean, we had some work in one set that was done by um, someone who was having problems with depression and the work was beautiful work. None of it sold because it was a bit too raw. Um, people didn't want it in their room, but many people commented on it and, and said how they connected to it. And yeah, so it was, it was interesting, yeah. That so yeah, maybe... It's not say- necessarily, you know... Sales don't necessarily make it. Yeah, so maybe it's bad. just the subject matter really at, yeah. at that stage. So that helps them to understand maybe they need to be painting different things. Well, but you know, artists paint, they paint, paint what they're feeling. If they're in a low, a low period of their life, they're painting those feelings, which are um, just a little bit harder to sell. Yeah. Do you ever advise artists who maybe you don't accept into the gallery? or don't sell that much work, or even something you really love, on what they should be doing with their work? Like, sh- do you think, do you say, oh, that could be great for, you know, a product or for a book or for another gallery or... or yeah, we do like occasionally do that, don't yeah. we? Yeah. You've yeah. got to be a little bit careful that because they're quite sensitive and they don't... Some of them really want opinions. They just, it doesn't matter what you tell them, negative or positive, they're really appreciative and others are really hurt. So it's a tricky one. Just got to, yeah, you, you have to, when you're talking to that person, you have to decide whether you're going to go there and be a little bit more honest with them. Do you find artists to be quite vulnerable and nervous? Oh, you get, yeah, I probably think mostly, I, I yeah. Think majority, even, yeah. Even ones that are very loud and out there, probably there's insecurity yeah. behind it all. That's why they're sort of trying to. Yeah, I suppose, yeah. I think they are. I think people find it really hard to... It's a passion and they're doing it and they love it. But, but to sell it, sell it it's selling their product, yeah, they're pretty shy about that. What do you hope that people take away from coming to Louis and Lane Gallery? And what um, do you hope that they get out of coming? I, I, well, we always hope that they have a lovely experience and get to see lots of you know, interesting pieces of work. And we, we would hope that they go away wanting to come back and look at a new collection. Yeah, basically, yeah. But, and, it, you know, it's great when it's a chance thing that someone's going to come across something that they, they want to take home with them. You know, it needs to be the right size. Um, it needs to, 
they have to have the space, the money, it has to you obviously speak to them. So when all those things come together and they've got something that they want, it's a great thing. And yeah. you know, they're absolutely thrilled and we're thrilled that it's found a good home. So it's a nice business to be in in that respect. Because people are pretty chuffed when they find the right the right painting. Yeah. It's but great. It, it's the environment helps a lot too. Yeah. You want people to feel really comfortable when they're in here and not like some galleries you're going to, you, it's, they're quite... Intimidating. Yeah, they are intimidating and, and you don't feel comfortable in them and you, you want people to feel really comfortable and, and come back and ha have a nice warm feeling and, and feel that they can connect and talk and chat and whatever with us. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's then art's not an elitist thing. I mean, we have, yeah, you know, both the established artists as well as... Because people, yeah, because people come in and say, oh, I don't understand art, I don't really understand what I'm looking at. Okay, you don't have to understand it. Do you like it or you, you don't like it? It's simple as that. You know, if you love it, if something's talking to you from it, you know, something you can see, something that reminds you of something, you don't have to really know anything more than that. It just has to appeal or not appeal. It's, yeah. Will you display young people's work? Yeah, we, we have. We, we have, yeah. We have. We've done exhibitions for the local schools from prep, prep. <laughs> right through to grade six. Um, we had a lovely selection. All the parents came in. They had a, like a celebrate, celebratory type night. Kids were, got a real buzz out of that because they saw their, their work. Pretty in the amazing, gallery. these portraits of the mums. Just very insightful. Yeah, it was. It was really amazing. It was, actually. Yeah, I mean, yeah, these. Children's and, art was and, fantastic. Yeah, that was sort of more of a voluntary thing and then the parents could buy it from the children. So the children would get a little bit of pocket money and their parents would buy it. And, you know, they sort of, so it would go through the, the process of actually a sale. Yeah, so we, we've done those sort of things. We've had VC students and, and we yeah. do the um, VCA students as well, the Proud mm. Exhibition. Yeah.